Hello, good afternoon, and hola to Edith. Welcome along, first in on YouTube. Um, hi, Sharon, first on Facebook, and Julie, welcome along to you too. Um, Elizabeth and Shelley, and oh gosh, you're really busy already. Um, hi, Jules, hi, Cynthia, sunny in Hensford. Not too bad here, it's not particularly sunny, but it's not particularly cold and it's not particularly wet. So that, that's kind of a, it's a nice day here today, I would say. Um, hello, Anita in Stockport and Julie, and uh, mind you, I haven't had a chance to take Bobby out, so she, she might be in later, being a little bit um, over-excitable. Um, hi, Ginny. Hi, Julie. Hi, Tina. Hi, Rosina in North Devon. Where in the world are we? Come and let me know where you are, what your weather's like, and what you've been up to. Uh, Yvonne's in Tennessee. Hello to you, Yvonne. Um, a dull day in North Lancashire. Um, hello Sue and Elizabeth and Linda and Angela. Now we're going to see a little bit of quilt as you go um, today. Um, hi Stephanie. Sunshine today in Ireland, she says. Um, Ruby's in Holland. Hello, welcome along. Josie, happy new year to you too. Thank you very much. Um, Sally's in Westminster, Massachusetts in the USA. Girls in South Lincolnshire. We are all over the place, you know. Um, hi Kitty. I'm in Birmingham. Hi, Digimi Birch. Hello to you. <laughs> we haven't got Lisa with us today. She's, uh, she couldn't make it today. Um, but hopefully she's going to be back with us again on Saturday. Um, hi, Margaret. Hi, Leanne. And, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit behind with my Facebook. I haven't scrolled down enough. Um, Maria's in the Costa Blanca in sunny... Sp oh, I'm envious. Love a little bit of sunshine. Sharon in sunny Florida. Grey in Yorkshire, says Angela. Hello, hello, Anne. Um, Cherry's in Grantham. Um, let me get down to the bottom. Sorry if I miss any of your comments. I do kind of take a look back. Oh, Denise Dodd. Well, hello to you in a cold Leicester show. We've got, we've got a large wadding just for you. Um, remember you were saying last week we had the, um, uh, the crib size wadding on the website. We've got it back in stock literally about five seconds ago. And we have got the larger sizes as well. We have a, we couldn't get the twin, which is the next size up from the crib, but we do have the full and we do have the queen. So we've got the very large size. I can't remember the sizes offhand, but if you have a look on um, on the website, then they're, they're all there under new, but literally just gone on. Just for you, that one. You see, you never know what you're going to get for when you ask. Um, hello, Alicia in Mexico. Welcome back again. Washing loads of stash after a flood. Oh, no, Rue. Um, bit cold in Northumberland. Hello, Angela. Hello, Jennifer. Made it back from a dump in Sheffield, says Joanne. Hello to you, too. Um, right, we are going to do a bit of sewing. Uh, did I just say that? So, you know, sometimes, sometimes I don't know what's coming out of my mouth and it just, things aren't connected from my head and I can't remember whether I've said things or not. But we're going to do a little bit of quilt as you go. Um, right, and this is what... I'm working on the nice thing about quilt as you go this is a reversible quilt as you go um, is that uh, you're only working on one block at a time so this is actually four blocks so the largest item you need to put under your sewing machine actually I have sewing machined or machine sewn these together so if you're going to make a big quilt there, there might be a, a lot of work to go on there but you could actually hand sew these together um, but the nice thing about working on smaller blocks like this is that you don't need a huge machine and you can just carry on adding to it. So if I thought oh, I'm going to make a placemat and I've got four blocks there and that's it. Um, but I'm going to add another two today. And then when I do the YouTube video, I'm going to add another three down the side because I'm actually making a little cot, um, a little quilt for Maddie. And obviously she's not very, her bed's only about that big, so I'm just going to make a little quilt to go over it. But it's a nice project, and I'll go into that in more detail in a bit, if you do like hand sewing, because you've only got one block at a time to sew. Machine sew these together. Um, what I've done is actually um, echo quilted them. But if you wanted to, so that's one block. So if you wanted to hand sew and maybe do a little design across all of them or just some big stitch sewing, that's entirely up to you. But you do, you're working on one block at a time. So that's all you've got on your knee as you're working. And then I've zigzag stitched these together. But if you wanted to hand sew those, then of course you can do as well. But the machine stitching was just a lot quicker and I've only just made it. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. I've cut out all the bits and everything, but I will explain. And I will do a YouTube video on that as well. Um, hopefully after this if we're not too late so um, you'll have all the details there um, without the chat 
Um, Sylvia's been making blocks this morning, shopping this afternoon. Um, hello from the place of the great train robbery, says Winner. Where's that then? Where's the place of the great train robbery? Um, hello Lorraine, hello Janet, hi Alan. Middle of winter in South Florida, it's 72. Oh, you must be frozen. Middle of winter at 72. Hello Jackie, welcome back again and happy new year to you too. And to, to you too, Heather Prangley from Daunton. Um, Ruth's in Friends in California. Cold in Norfolk, says Lois. Um, Sam got a quilting pack. Now these quilting packs, to mention, the block of the month quilt tops, we were promised they'd be here today and we haven't had a, a delivery yet. So um, I'm, ho I'm sorry about that because there's so many of you waiting for them, I know. All of the, um, we counted how many people from the Facebook page wanted a pack and we managed to get that many packs out. I don't know if it's to those specific people, but then people are still coming back saying, I'd like one, I'd like one. So we have got them in order. We were promised them today. So I don't know, tomorrow, I, but as soon as we possibly can. I will post on both Facebook, hello Virginia in Texas, um, and on YouTube as soon as they're here and, and let you know. And hopefully we've got enough this time. We'll be on pack 21, can you believe? Um, Oh, no, I ain't sure. let me just wind back again. Who who has been doing the hoovering? Lois, naughty corner. Oh, go on, naughty corner, off you go. I'll let you know when you come out. Actually, I think Leslie's still in the naughty corner. She's all right, though. I mean, this is months ago. I forgot to let her out again, but she's fine because she's, she's, she's got the gin. She'll be um, oh, you're not the only person that's hoovering, Lois. Oh, sorry, I missed that one. Gosh, you're a naughty lot. Hi Tammy from CA, is that California? Welcome along. Angela's in Shakespeare country, that's Stratford isn't it? I know where that one is. Um, Jane's in Blackpool. Julie Jones is in France. Could you tell me did you use, use your furs? Furs his pink cotton for the abstract bases messenger bag. Oh Tracy, I think we've got a bit of spell check going on. Could you tell me, did you use your furs his pink cotton for the abstract? I can't remember. I can't remember what the pink was. Um, and what sliders, etc., would you use for one inch webbing? One inch webbing, one inch sliders. I think we've only got one inch sliders on the website, actually. Hattie's had blue sky today. Um, where are you in NI? Oh, sorry, not talking to me. I love it when you chat amongst yourselves. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of bags, Yvonne. Um, I do a lot of, uh, well, purely because they, they tend to be quite quick and I can make a bag in an hour um, or a short YouTube video. Quilts take a, a little bit longer to do and I, I tend to do the quicker, to be honest. But there's, I mean, you could use that on a bag. You wouldn't need to line it either. There you go. Um, now, that I've got some new, um, and actually I want to show you a back in stock. So I've got some stuff to show you before we get sewing. And I've got some of the, um, you know, we were talking the other day about batting, wadding, stabiliser interfacing and all that kind of malarkey. I've got, I've got some of the um, tearaways and washaways to show you as well. In fact, let's do that now um, because we do have these on the website, but they're not normally very well explained. So if you are an embroiderer, if you have an embroidery machine, these are going to be ideal for you. So this one is your cutaway super strong. So basically, you're going to iron this onto the back of your fabric before you put it underneath your sewing machine or your embroidery machine. And it is, it's, it's permanent stability, but you cut away the extra fabric back to the stitches again. And the Super Strong is recommended for um, outerwear, for heavier fabrics um, or open weave fabrics as well. So if you've got t-shirts and sweatshirts and fleeces and things like that, and you're putting badges on or embroidering onto then that's going to be ideal for you. And how much is on that? 30 centimetres by five metres. So you've actually got five and a half yards by 12 inches on there. It's quite, quite a big roll. We've got plenty of these in stock as well. And this one is the water soluble. We were talking about water soluble the other day. Um, this is the one where you, um, it's ideal for putting on the top of a fabric like toweling or fleece that has a pile to it and you don't want your embroidery stitches getting caught up in, in the stitches. Um, or if you're making something 3D. So the, uh, most, most embroidery machines as far as I know, I don't come with these 3D projects but you can buy them and you can download them as well. So that's what that one's for. So you, you literally um, place it on, on top of your fabric and um, use water 
to wash it away afterwards and it just disappears. It goes a little bit gooey and then you can just peel it all off. And the last one we've got of these to show you is the Tearaway Cotton Fix. So this is very similar to the Super Strong, um, but you tear, oh sorry, you tear, you don't cut. So it's adhesive, it's got a paper backing to it, um, and then you tear away the paper side of it after. All of your instructions are on there as well. And those are all, all Madeira. So that, that's just letting you know, because we were talking about them the other day, but I didn't actually bring in, the, in any to show you. And remember we talked about the Decaville, we've got Decaville Light and Decaville Heavy. What I was also thinking when I was down at the office the other day, um, if you wanted something really stiff, whoops, we've got this um, Pelmet interfacing. So this isn't self-adhesive and it's really stiff. So it's designed for pelmets. That's how, how wide it is and we sell it by the meter. Um, not sure of prices, you need to have a look on the website. Um, it's all curly because it comes off, uh, off a roll. Um, but that is really stiff. So although it's called pelmet interface or pelmet stiffener, this is going to be perfect if you're making tie backs. You know the perfectly structured tie backs, you just cut this out, cut your fabric bigger and then you can stitch around it. Or if you're making boxes and things like that. I wouldn't include this in the seams. You know the little box I made for your fat quarter, um, fat quarters at the back there, where I um, have a look on, on YouTube if you didn't see it, but I, I, I drew the pattern onto, that was Decaville Light, so onto the interfacing and then cut the fabric out around it so there's no interfacing in the seam allowance. That's what I'd do with this. I'd use this as the pattern and not put it into the seam because that is really stiff. So those are just a few things that you might not know that we had. Um, hello, Princess Morningstar. Hi, Stephanie. Um, hi, Mark. Yeah, we're good. Oh, hi, Jen. Got a best press today. Wondering, do you sell Bonder Web on the website? Um, we do. We've, we've got some packs of Bonder Web. They're in, in, in strips. Sure, we've got stock of them. But yeah, if you put Bonder Web in, they're definitely on there. Hello, Marion in South Wales. Um, Oh, you're talking about kinky boots, you devils. Thank you for my scarf material in two halves. <laughs> That's all right, Carol. Um, oh, hi, Nancy. It's cold. It's 33 degrees. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Pelmet interfacing for purses. Really, Sharon? That's a really nice idea. It, it'll give it such a, a, a good structure, wouldn't it? Um, Leanne's in Stanley County, Durham. Hello. Oh, hello, Kaylee. She's new. Welcome along. Anne from Cardiff, she's here as well. Right, we have a back in stock. Now, I haven't got it here actually, it's fact it's there, but you can't see it. Um, the scarf that um, we've made so many of. Um, and, and again, have a look back on, um, on my YouTube channel for that if you haven't seen it, but it's basically half a metre of, should have brought it over, half a metre of fabric sewn into a tube and twisted inside. So you get this lovely drapey scarf that will actually go around your neck twice. Obviously, this is a piece of fabric, not a scarf, but it looks something like that. Sorry if that rubbed against my mic. Um, but we were making them from uh, viscose and chalice lawns, um, but they would be lovely in jersey if it's lightweight enough so i've got some jerseys to show you this is a back in stock so we've had it before but we managed to get hold of some more because it was so popular and it's it's lightweight it's jersey but it's brushed and i wish we had touchy telly because if you felt this it feels like velvet that is going to be so comfortable to wear around your neckline all you need for the scarf is half a meter you can tell how fine it is because of the way that it drapes, but it does have stretch. But if you wanted to make this into a top or a skirt or anything else, of course, it's not just for scarves. I just thought when it came back again, that, that would make a really beautifully comfortable scarf. It's, it's just really, oh, it's just really lovely. Um, and we've got some more jerseys as well. So that's the back in stock. Let's move that out of the way. This one is a new one. And I'm going to have to have a look on my phone to see what it was called. If I have a look on the new in, it's one of those. But just hold the line a moment while I have a look. There we are. Floral flower buds on black viscose. But this is viscose jersey. So it's got that stretch. And viscose, of course, is a 
um, semi-synthetic fabric they call it so it's natural because it's made from tree bark but there is a little bit of um, chemical stuff going on there in the process but for the most part you've got a breathable natural fabric and what I love about these is look when you pull them you, that you don't it doesn't break up the pattern so if you're making a pair of leggings out of this and it stretches around your bum um, it doesn't kind of break when you stretch them not that I'm saying that your leggings have to stretch a lot but you know but again it's another one of the fluid jerseys that is a lot of jerseys you know, when you think about making sweatshirts and things like that if you wore it around your neck it just stand out a mile um, that's not a skirt that's a belt I've <laughs> done that excuse me um, but this is fluid so again it will I shall hush a moment while I drape it around seg neckline just so to show you what it would look like as the scarf obviously uh, without the black background so to me it's just a really nice fabric to wear but of course you can make tops or skirts or pelmets Lois in just the same way um, I wouldn't make the hat out of these it uh, Sally it's a bit floppy I think you need something a little bit firmer for that the have I got it here the child's hat with the mustard lining is a little bit heavier if you made it out of the viscose it's going to be really floppy it would work you could do it but it would be it would be really floppy to be honest right more new stuff look at this one now again if you're wearing black and you just wanted to add something that's so colorful it looks like like crayons doesn't it the way that that's been drawn this is uh, another viscose jersey it's called stretch argyle multicolored and for the half meter that's four pounds which means if you're going to make a scarf again you're only paying four pounds for the scarf but it's a really lovely lightweight one so if you're wearing some actually that looks nice with my top doesn't it if you're wearing something plain that would just make it a little bit different hello sylvia she's made alive welcome along <laughs> lynn's miniskirt was a pelmet i'm not going to tell you what my dad said my eyeshadow looked like something in the snow which wasn't very flattering these are new as well now when i was saying you don't just have to make scars out of these but this is what i'm thinking when i saw these um if you're wearing something patterned then maybe you want a plain one so this is so i need to just check exactly what they're called um it's a viscose jersey again this one's called mink beige i, I love this color i think it's so classy and i think it works really well with browns but imagine that on black got a black jacket or a black top i think that would look gorgeous hello bonnie she's late but she's here oh hi brian cold in ohio and christine hello to you too viv went to the war of the worlds experience did you where's that i didn't know there was a world world of the war experience um but to date hi Ver oh francesca's arrived <laughs> welcome along francesca we are going to do some um quilt as you're going in a minute i just wanted to show you these new i've only got a couple more these new um viscose jerseys they're, they're just lovely they're really lovely quality you'll know that when you get them home um this one's called khaki green again really classy those colors together look so nice don't they um but any kind of greens don't tend to clash so if you're wearing a mint or a pale green or if you've got beige or white or something like that then that's the khaki and then let me just fold this out of the way i'll show you the last one i'm going to show you today which is the denim blue it's gorgeous now we've got some more fabric i mean with denim can you imagine a pair of jeans nice white shirt fancy scarf around your neck um hi Con i still haven't got it connie i'm sorry um it's, it's taken ages and I, I can't wait to see what what it is but that's i shall let you know as soon as the parcel arrives seriously but i'm, I'm not here yet i'm sorry oh viv has been to the dentist my father has been digging in the garden when he saw me <laughs> yeah my my um my mum didn't wear makeup and um my mum was very natural this is the way that i am so you like it or not and that was it which i think is uh 
which is quite commendable. So when I was a teenager and I wanted bleached highlights, I went red at one point and uh, wanted to wear makeup and high heels and all this kind of thing. She was mortified. Um, black with the neon prints come through it. That sounds nice, Bonnie. Hi, Sue. Yeah, so they, w makeup and, and stuff like that, they, um, she didn't, what did she call it? She, she wore a scent if she went out somewhere and maybe a bit of rouge. But mascara, I never touched those eyes with my mum. Everything was very natural. Didn't pluck her eyebrows or anything like that. That's this, this is what I'm like. And I'm up. that was my mother. Um, hello, Olive in Pennsylvania. Oh, Mulder waterfall cardigan would be gorgeous in that, wouldn't it? Um, fabric glue pens, I have um sew line which i don't have with me i've got a prim one but i normally use a sew line but they're the same i'm, I'm sure it's actually the same manufacturer they just rebrand them i don't know that but that's what i'm thinking okay shall we do a little bit of quilting as we're going uh lisa lisa's not here today bonnie i'm afraid um oh she's picking up a laptop for charity i think I think that was it. Oh, I'm in trouble now because she did email me yesterday to say she wasn't going to uh, be able to make it. Mary Quanta of oh, Lorraine. Um, when I was much younger, and you'd never allow it now, but I used to jump on a train and go down to London when I was about 16. So that would have been 76. And um, go to Carnaby Street, and I'm sure it was Carnaby Street where there was a Mary Quant shop. And I'd, I couldn't afford to buy anything like that. Uh, Carol's 75 but with makeup 65. <laughs> See, I I'm 61 but without makeup I'm about 110. <laughs> um, no, thank you, Debbie. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're understanding like that. That, that, was, that was so sweet of you. I was, I was really flattered. Thank you. Um, hi, Leslie Mills. Sylvia once washed a beautiful wool skirt which turned into a pelmet, but you still wore it. Um, Cod West in Virginia is Melinda. Hello to you too. Oh, Bieber. See, that was my era, but that's the era that I was broke. Could, but Bieber is still going, aren't they? Uh, weren't they in, um, didn't they have a department in the House of Fraser? Sure, I'm sure they did. Anyway, um, Zoe, hello. <laughs> uh, Janet's cooking tea. She's got a parcel. Uh, Julie's 61, born in 1960. Oh, snap. July the 4th, me, Julie. Where, where are you in the year? Are we close? Are we the same day? Um, right, I think we're up to that. Anyway, should we do a bit of seven? Shall we do this thing? Because I, I, so I need to get it done because I'm, I'm making a quilt for Maddie. Almost finished with the book. They've got most of it now. Oh, cheesecloth shirts. Do you know? Oh, here we go. We, we regressed to the 70s. Uh, Lorraine, I, I, I used to live in cheesecloth shirts, cheesecloth shirts and Oxford bags. My mother ironed my cheesecloth shirt. My mother didn't do very much ironing because everything was polyester and static and Brentford nylon, so we didn't really get to use the iron very much. Why she decided to iron the cheesecloth shirt, I don't know. But the cheese, the one that I had. It looked like streaky bacon. So it was all like reds and brown stripes. And it was so tight, because that's, that's the way that we could wear them in those days. Um, and she ironed it and it turned into a tunic. It never quite went back again. I tell you what else I used to wear, Simon shirts. Remember Simon shirts in the 70s? They were like, they were jersey, weren't they? Uh, with a few buttons down here, but then pockets, two pockets just on there and seams. Who was Simon? I never thought about that at the time. <sighs> Saturday's job in Dorothy Perkins was on the Bieber counter. Oh, I had Bieber and Dorothy Perkins, didn't know that. Oh, Sharon, we've got some more lucky dips coming out, but instead of having a pattern and, and five planes or just five planes, these are five patterns plus a plane. Uh, we just need to get them packaged up. I, was, I love my cheesecloth shirt, I, Andrea. I, I just, yeah, I loved it. We were makeup. <laughs> I remember somebody saying, that might have been my dad, um, in the 70s, with, with no guidance from a mother who would not wear makeup. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and, and it might have been my dad. And he says, it looks like I've blended all these beautiful colours of blues and blacks in my hand and then gone. <laughs> You're maybe just done that. Do you remember um, black cherry flavoured lipstick with a rollerball in the end of it. It's really shiny, glossy. If you kissed anybody, you just slide off their faces. 
Um, but you'd spend, you'd spend all the time just licking it off because it tasted so lovely. Owen, Owen. I don't know Owen. Oh, and love beads. You'd wrap them round and round and round your neck till you look like one of those African ladies that wears rings around the neck. The more love beads, the better. Just, just never, just never break them. Deirdre had a few Simons <gasps> and crocheted waistcoats, Leslie. Oh, so Asara was posh with the Jeff Banks shirts. Um, what did my sister wear? Ben Sherman's, Ben Sherman shirts. <gasps> um, and CNA. Oh, remember CNA? Red Cherry Bonnie, yes. Oh, Ellen shopped in CNA as well. Patricia had suede hot pants. I bet they used to chafe. <laughs> Jan oh, Janet, you're just boasting. She had a beautiful long dress in CNA and it still fits. <laughs> Tie your shirts up, I know. Oh, no. So I wasn't intending to regress back in time to the 1970s, but we did have a lovely past, didn't we, Carol? Crumb became... See, I, my, my sister was a... Um, she, she wasn't really a skinhead. I don't know what they call them skinheads. But she had... Um, she used to have her hair feathered, so it was layered here and then long, a bit like a mullet, and a Crombie coat and a Ben Sherman, and stay pressed trousers, and monkey boots. Me being three and a half years younger, inherited all of these things when, she, when they went out of fashion. So her Crombie with a little handkerchief in the pocket and a stud I was wearing to school about two years after they went out of date. Um, a Travia coat. I don't know what that one is, Pollyanne. <laughs> yeah, but you're still the same size, aren't you? That, that's okay. A Maud, was that it? She's not a, she a skinner, she was a Maud, I don't know. Feathered hair. And a, you used to be able to buy combs with razor blades in. Do you remember that? And you, you just, I never did, but you just comb your hair and half of it was cut off and the rest of it was, oh. Anyway, uh, basic your rollers. <laughs> Gosh, oh loafers with Blakey's on your heels. Blake, what's a Bla what's a Blakey on your heels? So I don't know what a Blakey on your heel is. Andrew remembers going to a local community centre. Oh, we, we called them segs, like the metal bits that go under on, on the bottom of your heel, so that you clipped as you went along. I'm not sure we called them segs. Nineties uh, baby. Oh, sorry, M. Um. <laughs> so Afghan, oh Afghan coats. These are smell, didn't they? Never had an Afghan coat. Heated, heated rollers. Do you know, Lynn, um, we had, uh, with heated rollers, um, when I was working on Ideal World, we, th they brought in microwavable heated rollers. I know. And uh, we th they were so hot. And we had a, a guest who was a hairdresser and um, a lady with hair about my length and straight. And we did this amazing before and after. And she put these heated rollers in. You could almost smell the hair burning. Um, and when she came, when it came out, she got all these really tight curls all over her head. Um, and this is live on on TV. And uh, and the guest said to her, "So, what do you think about your new hairstyle?" And she just went, "It's different. It's awful. It's awful. Um, you're not lazy, Susan. Oh, Susan. Oh, gosh, <laughs> you're a lazy Susan. I got that. Um, yeah, I'm sure we call them sex. Anyway, should we do some sewing?" <laughs> I, I never had an Afghan coat. I just heard that this thing. Chelsea girl, remember that? I still had the heated rollers in my mum book when I was 14 and I'm 60 and they still work. Really? Hello? Teas, coffees, lattes, hot chocolates. Oh, we're, we're in the 1970s, we are. Oh my God. <laughs> but no, we've gone back in time a little. We're supposed to be doing some sewing. Thank uh, you. Pink champagne, baby sham. Oh, <laughs> anybody for baby sham? <laughs> That you know what they're like. Um, hi, oh yeah, here we go, here's Lynn. Yes, please. 80s baby, no idea either. See, 80, I, I was, um, I was, uh, I was in my 20s in the 80s. So that was, that was still a very fashionable time. There were a lot of frills and a lot of big, in fact, I started on um, Kids ITV in, in 86. And it's very big hair, and I don't have any kind of volume at all, as you can see. Um, but I can, um, I can remember plaiting my hair into tiny little plaits and going to bed with it damp. So when I woke up, there was a bit of volume, and then um, tonguing it, 
when I woke up, so it was like curly volume, and then tying everything up on top of my head into a pineapple with a big scarf wrapped around the whole lot. That was the 80s. Big hair, big shoulders. Oh, I love those big shoulders. The power shoulders, they're called, did not they? They want cherry bees and snowballs. That's, honestly, this, I know, believe them. Brandy and baby sham, gosh, with a, co with a cocktail cherry, Gary. 80s perms, oh yeah, I'd, I'd burn, perms never took on my hair, they'd be straight again by the next day. Anyway, oh, do bonnet. Um, oh gosh, there was an advert for that, wasn't it? A pony. <laughs> well, yeah, we did look like poodles, but that, that was the look, wasn't it, in the 80s? Mid 50s, baby. Oh, we're going back a little bit further. What did you wear in the 50s? What was your favourite outfit from 1950s? Was it big skirts and bobby socks? Oh, Leanna. Well, I hope we're feeling you up. Feeling you up? I hope we're cheering you up and making you feel a bit better. I, I kind of merged all my words into one sentence there. Um, yeah, I hope we're cheering you up a little bit there. So. Is it gin time? Seventies baby it was never allowed fashion. Dairyman's daughter. Did you rebel then, Morag? In the eighties. Didn't this I know and beehive hair. Anyway. Nancy fits in with twiggy clothes with a pencil figure. I bet you met her, didn't you, Nancy? That was uh, that was your time. Um, oh, happy birthday for Friday, Jane, uh, Jilly. Right, let's do, let's get some because that wasn't supposed to be a sewing. Um, we were talking about joining wadding together the other day, so I bought a couple of pieces just to show you because some of you are asking for that. So I, I did think about that. Brandy and baby sham, Dubonnet Adrian. Yes, Dubonnet with. Is that the one where she was in the aeroplane? She tipped it all up, or he, he put her seat back and... Was that, was that Dubonnet? 1947, so like 15 clothing too. You'd like the um, uh, simplicity fabrics then, wouldn't you? With the 1950s clothing, we've got that back in stock as well. Some bits anyway. The craft text placemats on the website. They'd be under the new, that we might have sold out, but they're under, if you go under new, they should be there. Um, uh, I think that was Cinzano, wasn't it, where she tipped backwards? What was Dubonnet then? Mm. Loads of, a net under skirt under a dindle skirt. Lady Diver, oh yes, um, with, the, with the big sleeves and a ruffled neckline, little bow. Hello Leslie, you haven't missed anything apart from the Dubonnet. Um, Cinzano with Jane Collins, yes it was, wasn't it? Right. Oh, don't worry, Kat, we haven't done anything yet. We're, talk we're reminiscing. We're all travelling back in time at the moment. Um, oh, good morning. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> Kath, Kath feeling agent. She was born in the 50s. Oh, okay, who's the oldest here then? So Kath was born in the 50s. Anybody born in the 40s? Come and let me know. Who's old? Who's the oldest one we've got? Who's the youngest one? We've got Megan here. Who's, who's the youngest person as well? Um, Rose gets to platter her after a bus and she calls it her Medusa hair team. <laughs> 1945 for Gloria. Any advance on 45? Any advance on 45? 45? 45 it is. Um, Gina says you still have... Oh no, uh, oh, for, for, Pat was born in 45 as well. Jim, my mum would have been um, Debbie Walsh in 71. Um, I was 11 then. Yes to 40, said Margaret. I think I think Megan's 13. I don't think she's with us today. 48 for Joan. Um, Bonnie's only 66. You're a baby. 49 for Pamela. 48 for Margaret. I think for, 45 at the moment were the oldest. 57, Lynette. <laughs> My mum would have been 100 years old next month. She was born in 1922. In fact, it's my dad's birthday coming up. So I'm looking at my watch like I can tell when my dad's birthday is. Where are we? The 12th. He would have been 96 on the 17th. And Jennifer Jones is 49. He was four years younger than my mother. Anyway, we 
I just, just so I went to I went to only dogs can hear me then for a moment. 56, 85, 57, 48, 53. It's like it's like a bingo class. 59, 53. We're still at 45 as the oldest. Oh, 44 is no Mary Alice Hornsby, 1942. 63, 58. Do you know what? What is lovely about this? Rosa's dad is 92. Wow. Doesn't it show what a wide age range of people we've got together? I think that's so lovely. 72 for Morag, 1990 for M. So, oh, thank, thank you for I think this is lovely. It's really nice because, you know, I, I see your names and I get to recognise everybody. And some of you, particularly on, on Facebook, have your pictures there so we can see you. Um, 59 for Sharon, 65. But it, it's just so so lovely to see such a, a wide age range of people. Well, 86 for Liana. See, my... my my eldest is 81. You're kind of that, that kind of age. Of, as, you, could be my, you could be my daughter. Um, normally watching my mum who is 91, but sadly she passed away just after Christmas. Oh, I'm sorry, Helen. Mum loved the broadcast. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm so sorry. Um, it was 25 years ago since my mum died. Doesn't it go quickly? Too quickly. Anyway. April 52 says that. Let's do some sewing. Uh, let, let's join these two pieces together first of all because we were talking about this the other day. If you've got smaller pieces of wadding, batting, what, whatever you call it from whatever country you're in, um, Christine, um, you can put subtitles. If you go, can anybody help Christine out here because I can't actually type anything. She wants subtitles because she's deaf and I'm sure that's something that you do at home. I'm sure when you go onto YouTube, there's a subtitles button and you can click on that. It's not always 100% accurate, um, but I do, I do try and talk quite clearly. So if you can't lip read, then hopefully YouTube will be able to translate that. Um, but if anybody else is using the subtitles, can you just, would you mind just putting on, on YouTube just to say for Christine, this is how you do it. Um, so Christine, I think you do that. You think you you click the button on on YouTube? I hope you I hope you got that. So anyway, so I've got my two pieces of um, wadding. It doesn't matter how big or how small these are, as long as you've got a straight edge, because basically you're going to put these two pieces together. So if it's not straight, it's not going to work. You can kind of move it a little bit. Wadding does give. But as long as you can get those two together, this is dead easy. And all I'm going to do is do a zigzag stitch over the top. We do have, oh, Sheila in 44. There you go, Sheila, 1944. Seems like you're the oldest. M's 31, is M the youngest? I am, but I don't know why. I'd, oh, sorry, talking to each other. Three dots at the top of the page. Is that Facebook or is that YouTube? Brian was, oh, Brian was 54, Brenda 61. Anyway, um, so we're going to put these up together, then put it underneath your sewing machine, choose a zigzag stitch and choose a long stitch, and I'm just lining up the join here to the center point of my foot, and I'm just gonna zigzag over them. So as you're sewing, push the two sides together so they meet, but don't try to overlap them because you, then you'll get a lump. And that's literally, that's all it is. That's literally all you're going to do. I've got a thread caught there. So a wider thread if you prefer, and just basically feed those together. And you can join together as many pieces as you need to, and it doesn't matter how big or how small they are. So don't ever throw away your wadding or your your batting because you can use up those scraps by doing that. I'm not sure if we have it in stock on the website, um, but you do. we do have some tape that you simply put over the top. It's designed to join these and you iron it on. So that's another way of doing it if you don't want to zigzag them together. Okay, thank you for everybody. Christine, Debbie doesn't have control. Thank you. Thank you for, letting, for getting back to Christine for me because I haven't got my keyboard to type that up. Right. Look where we are and I haven't started sewing yet. 
Um, I'll just do a couple of these. So we, we might be, I need to do two because I'm, I'm doing them together in rows. Um, so if you haven't joined us earlier on, it's a reversible quilt as you go quilt block. There's four blocks there all together. So where's my bits? Here we go. I am going to make this quite a bit bigger, but um, it, it is a, a, an ongoing project. So quilt as you go, basically, you, you quilt each block individually and then join them together. And there's lots of different methods of doing it. Some of them are self-bound. This one isn't. And a lot of people will hand sew these together, but I've done the exact same technique as I did with the wadding to join these pieces together as well. So it's really quite simple, but it's fun to make. I, I like these things where you, it's almost like origami with, with fabric. So for each one of those blocks, I have four five inch squares and the fabric I'm using, oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called. It's the Sleeping Beauty one, but I don't think it's actually called Sleeping Beauty. And I've got four of those. It's on the website. This would be lovely for a little um, cock quilt. And I've chosen four designs from the collection. Now it's important if you want everything to be uniform and facing in the same way that you sew them together in the same way and I tend to forget. So I'm just going to kind of match these up with this block. So I've got that one, that one, that one and that one. So I know I'm sewing them together because if I do that it's going to look very different. So that's what I've done already and that's how I'm going to sew them. So with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew these two together and then these two together. It doesn't have to be a quarter of an inch as long as it's uniform. Oh, I'm still on a zigzag. So I'm not using a quarter of an inch foot at the moment, but I know where that quarter of an inch is on the foot on my sewing machine because I do it so often. Okay, then I'm just going to pop my iron on, so just bear with me a second. And we'll snip those apart. And open them up. Obviously, if you're doing a big quilt, you can do loads of these all at the same time. And I'm going to press the seam on one in the opposite direction to the seam on the other. So I'll actually do that. I'm going to do it towards the dark side. It doesn't really make a difference and you can't really see a dark and light side on this fabric anyway, but that's what I'm doing. Hot enough? Yes. So one goes one way and one goes the other way. And that just makes it easier when I now sew these two pieces together, like so, because the seams are pressed in opposite directions, they kind of butt up against each other, because this part is going to be this, so it's going to be quite noticeable. So you can pop a pin in there if you wish, I'm not going to, I'm just going to sew. I'll do another one of these in just a second because I need two. So I'm just going to line those up and sew so I know that that centers together. And then this seam, I'm just going to press open. Um, don't worry if you can't be bothered to press it open. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. But let's have a go. That's still hot. Oops, there we go. It's a very quick quilt to make. So it might be worth just taking your time pressing things open and, you know, do, doing it properly. No need to rush anything. Right. 
So now I'm going to sew these two pieces, fold it in half, down each long side here, but I'll need to leave a turning gap in one edge. So I'll do that here. So sew a little bit, just reverse, only needs to be a couple of inches or so. And then all the way down this side. So we've got this. Then we're going to open it up and match up these two seams in the centre and we're going to sew all the way across there. And again, if you feel a little bit happier putting pins in, that's fine. I think you'll be all right with this. So I'm matching up again that centre point, matching up the raw edges, and just following the quarter of an inch line on my machine. My seams just got squished open as I'm sewing, but do you know, I don't really care. So I've got this thing going on. So let's squish it out so I've got a square. So these are five inch squares that I used. So now I need to measure, 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 there we are, the size of the square. Once you've done, the, and I'm only doing this to kind of belt and braces and I know this is going to be six inches because I've made so many of them already. If you want that to be really, really tight, it is exactly six and a quarter inches, but I've cut mine to six inches square and I, I think that's absolutely fine. Um, and I've already cut out my wadding and this is the 80-20 wadding. So this is the same as the ones that we just got back in on the website. And I'm going to stick that on there with some of my 505 adhesive spray. If you don't want to use an adhesive spray, so I'm just looking for some bit of rubbish to spray onto. I forgot that was still down there. Do you remember we were talking about the 70s? Mark, Mark, Mark. I didn't know I was in there. I was looking for a piece of paper. Like that. Amazing what you find when you have a rubbish in your drawers, isn't it? Um, so I'm just moving the machine out of the way and spraying onto the wadding. If you don't want to use wadding, uh, sorry, spray, then use a glue stick. You'll need to stick it somehow. So just use a glue stick and you're going to glue along the seams. Don't glue onto the actual fabric, but just glue along the seams. I'm just trying to tidy up here a little bit. Um, so glue, spray glue onto the wadding. Lots of it. And then this is the side with the turning gap in it. I want the opposite side and I'm going to put this onto here, like so. Then we'll turn it the right side out. Where's my gap? There it is. Let's just push all this through. Might be an idea to just leave that glue until it's um, not quite so wet so it, it holds. This is why you need to glue it in place so that when you turn it through, it's not going to move. It may lift up at the corners, but we're going to pop that down in just a second. Sue, you wouldn't believe what was underneath here. I'd show you, but I can't get my camera down there. This, it's, it is an Aladdin's cave. Um, so I need my turning tool, which of course I can't find, although it's always here and never moves. I've got a clover turning tool somewhere, which I don't have. Um, I've got some tweezers. If you have a pair of very pointy tweezers, they may help. These are very pointy. So I'm going to use the blunt end of these which is pointy, um, to push out, where's the hole gone? To push out the points. 
actually the tweezers that we've got on on the website the, the colored ones are perfect for this so you know a, a corner turning tool would be ideal but can't find it i think i do need i think a bigger a bigger organizer box than i've got jane to be honest um <laughs> helen you've still got mock ball and david see my sister like david cassidy but the reason I like the very pointy one, so the coloured ones that we've got on the website are perfect, is that you can now get in here and really pull out the points. You could, oh, I've got glue on there, look. You could use um, a pin, but these are a little bit more sturdy. So literally just pull out the points. And then we'll give that a press. And then I'll quilt it and then we'll make up another one. And again, I'm just echo quilting. Um, but if you've got more time, you could stipple. I wouldn't stitch in the ditch because this is reversible. And oh, no, you've got to sew the opening closed. Um, sew the opening closed by hand. I'm not going to do that now. I'll do that later. I do have an opening here. So I just put a little slip stitch in there. So hopefully your centre point, let's measure it because it might not have worked. The centre of this square should be exactly in the centre of that. Well, that's pretty good going, isn't it? Exactly in the centre of that square. So, but I still wouldn't stitch in the ditch because you've got to be <laughs> really pretty good to stitch along this seam and have that exactly the same on this side. It's, it's never going to work. Um, so with echo quilting, you're going to stitch just inside the triangle. Scribble all over it with your stitches. Do some free motion embroidery, hand sew it, quilt that however you will, whatever you feel like. But I'm just going to lengthen my stitch to a 2.6 and so around the triangle and again I, I will put all of this on YouTube uh, might not be till tomorrow because it's going to take me ages tonight to do a video um, but we'll, we will do a dedicated video for this one with more precise information of course about your um, centimeters and inches and measurements and we'll be a little bit more precise on that organizer boxes debbie i didn't know where i to stop we can get some more of those if you like these ones my little love these we can get some more of those the japanese fabric with the black strips are we going to do any more on the japanese fabrics with the black strips oh yes I haven't got around to doing that. I haven't done any videos since that day, actually. Um, sorry, who was that? Janet. I've just been, I've been, a, been a bit busy, to be honest. And we, we've, had, we've had quite a, um, an eventful week this week. So I haven't got so much done. We were actually, we were, we were broken it on Sunday night. Um, so yeah, things kind of got, got put back a little bit with a bit of devastation. Jeannie, it is a nice way to use your scraps or if you have, because I've used five inch squares, um, they are the same size as charm packs. So if you've got a charm pack and you don't know what to do with it, then why not do something like this? Again, I've used five inch squares, but do measure the size of the wadding. I've used six inch on this, Six and a quarter would have been an exact fit, but it depends how accurate you are with your seam allowance. It's a little bit more than six and a quarter is going to be a little bit too big. Thank you, KJ. Thanks, Denise. Right, so that's my square. Now I'm going to do another one because I need to, to join two together because otherwise I'm, I'm kind of just sewing half a, a block on there, which will actually go that way. So let me tidy this up a little bit and then we'll do the same all over again but we'll do it a bit quicker. I'm aware of time. Unless you've just got nothing better to do, you know. What are the loose ends on that one? So same again. So let's take, where's my squares? Oh, right down here. Oh, excuse. Oh, dropped them. 
Bear with me. Here we go. And again, to double check that I've got these in exactly the right place, if I put that on an angle like so, on point, I need one of those next to one of those and then one of those and one of those in that order so these two right sides together like so these two right sides together like so down here down here quarter minute seam allowance Christine did you get sorted out with your subtitles let me know don't like to think of anybody missing out because you can't hear when there are things available to help. <coughs> right, so that and that. Chop that. I may be running out of bobbin thread, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. Then bring up the iron. That there, that there. And we're going to press in opposite directions. So this one's going to go to the darker side, although you can't really tell on this fabric. So that's going that way. And this one's going the opposite way. This is a directional fabric, but I really, oh, look what I've done. I really don't think it matters. Um, I've sewn that, look, the wrong, the wrong way around. Um, I don't think it matters with something like this because it's going to get twisted around all over the place. I've sewn a right side to a wrong side. Never done that before. Not much. Never rip it like that. So that side to that side. Coffee's going cold again. Right, so that and that. That and that goes in that direction. And then these two right sides together. So your seams are now facing in the opposite direction. So that's going to make it easy to match up the center point. So I'll do that. And hold it in place and so. And then this seam is going to be pressed open. So I'm doing this a bit quicker than before because you just see me do it once, but I do need two to have any kind of an impact. Not the end of the world if you don't, if you can't be bothered. <laughs> Sue, I didn't hear you, Sue, sorry. You notice things more than I do. Has anybody noticed the deliberate mistake on the thumbnail which is both on YouTube and on Facebook. You know where I say uh, that there's a picture of what I'm making and the date and everything. I haven't heard any comments about that. <laughs> See, does it all the time. I do do it sometimes, not a lot, but normally when I do it, it's right in front of you lot. So everybody sees the mistake. Right, so we have this. So again, I, I know that that's right because I've matched it up with that. Then we're going to take the two long edges right sides together, match up the points in the center. And we're going to sew down each side, but leave a turning gap in one side. A baby could use myself so oh thanks olive yeah you could make you could make these any size you like as long as you're using squares you could use 10 inch squares i wouldn't go oh forgot me turning up i wouldn't go too small forgot me turning up in the side and i know i haven't got a seam ripper here because i looked for it the other day i do have a very sharp little pair of scissors though so i can get in there with that that's because I'm reading your comments and um, talking and sewing at the same time. Shouldn't be done, really. I do this a lot. I sew over turning gaps a lot. 
Oh, hi, Lisa. You okay? Thank you for joining us. We've been ages. Where are we? You see, we're five o'clock already. And we haven't done yet. We've, we've got loads to do. We're doing Quilt As You Go. But I will be doing the YouTube tut. Um, maybe after this one. I can stay awake. Right, so. Uh, 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 quilting's Olive's favourite. I do love it. It's, the, it's time for me. It's just having time to do it when there's so much on the go. So that's what I've got. And then we're going to pull these two open match up that center seam again i'm pushing those in opposite directions and we'll sew all across what's that little clip bit for on the front of your iron don't know looks like oh maybe if you're left-handed it gets it out of the way when you're ironing i don't know actually it looks like it should so i'm showing you that and you can't see a thing it looks like the wire should go in there so maybe if you're left-handed, it gets the, the lead out of the way, because otherwise you're ironing with that in the way. I'm assuming, never noticed that before, to be honest, but that would make sense to me. And actually, what a good idea that is, too. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, watch live the chat and then watch the YouTube channel. Oh, thanks, Alana. So it's really time consuming. I don't always get a chance to, to do all of the videos on YouTube, but, uh, but that's the idea. Thank you, Anne. I saw her. I saw her back. So we've got this. So we're going to flatten it out so that it's square. No. And there's my turning gap. So on the opposite side to the turning gap is where I'm going to put my wadding. So machine that to the way. Give this a good old spray. Again, if you don't want to use a, a spray adhesive, this is 505 that we've got on the website. But if you don't want to use a spray, you'll need a glue pen. You will need to fix. You need to glue it to there somehow. Um, so a glue pen along the seams would work really well. That's going to go over there. Normally I'd leave that just, just for, um, I don't know, half a minute or so, just to make it really sticky. Um, I thought the clip was for holding the cable and wrapping it around when it's went cold. I don't know. I've never used it. I've, I've never noticed it. Then this on the iron, I use it to stop the wrapping of the cord. I never wrap cord. That's a good idea. Um, yes, Anne, 50 grams is fine for Robin or Maddie. Robin, you might have a little bit left over. Um, right, so we've got this. And we need to turn it through the turning gap, which I've lost. There it is. And then poke out the corner. Can't believe I've been finally caught you like Oh, hello, Donna. Welcome along. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Donna. Where are you? There you are. Can I understand why I lost you for a while? Then one day it dawned on me. I'd gotten a new phone. <laughs> I'm still here. Same old. Hello, Gina in Dublin. Um, tried the patchwork from last Wednesday and failed. Tracy, was that the was that the one with the black light? I can't remember. I can't remember what I've done. I do need to do a video for that. I, I just don't know when I'm going to be able to do it. Um, so something to point out the corners. I will get my proper pointy tool for the video. Wherever that may be. I'm sure I've got another one somewhere. And at this point, if your wadding has lifted up anywhere inside, you can flatten it back down again pointy tweezers or a pin to get right into those corners. I don't normally worry too much about that, but these are all going to be joined together, so we do need pointy corners. Well, as pointy as you can get them. And then I've got an opening. I'm not going to close it now because I would hand sew that. So do excuse me for not finishing that off properly, but that would just take too long to do now. So there's my opening and I'd use a slip stitch. I will do that on the YouTube video. And then let's give it a press. And then we'll quilt it. And again, you can quilt this however you like. With the quilt as you go, as I said right at the beginning, this is a nice technique if you don't have much space. If you're not putting, uh, if you don't you know, want to put a load of fabric underneath your sewing machine. 
if you want to sit and sew by hand of an evening so my coffee is getting cold um, because you can hand stitch that you could do some big stitch quilting you could scribble all over it but the idea is quilt as you go that's your block now you quilt it so when you finish the whole thing you don't have to quilt it it's already done it's quilting as you're going um, now it's credit card Tina <laughs> mind you maybe they saw it that I'll have that as well <laughs> um, I guess quilting won't get close enough to close the gap I suppose if you you could get away with that yeah, if you if you quilted quite close to the seam, then that that I suppose would work. Zoe says, has anybody been to the Birmingham craft show, and is it worth going? I've not been. I don't know. Has anybody else been? Yes, Lisa, on Sunday night. Do you know? I mean, hats off to to the police. Um, they'd arrested somebody in the middle of the night for stealing a car. Two two people. And um, these people have got my, my credit and debit cards on them. I had no idea, no idea. Um, so they got, they got my whole purse. So we had a, a knock on the door at um, 20 past two in the morning uh, from somebody explaining what had happened. But if, if they hadn't had caught these guys for stealing the car, I would have just thought I'd left them somewhere. No idea. No sign of anything. Very, very well done, if that's a, a negative, positive thing. I don't know. But yeah, but anyway, worse things happen. Could have been a lot worse, but it wasn't. That's fine. So, that's that. So, all I'm doing, I should have lengthened, oh, I have lengthened the stitch to 2.6. And all I'm doing here is sewing around. We are, we are Fort Knox now, though. <laughs> I thought we were pretty good before, but oh, you, you, oh, nowhere near. Ten mile radius, the alarms go off now. So I'm just going to sew around each triangle in the same way. No, not my car. No, they they've been on, on, a, on a, a spree, on a splurge. Um, they're selling the car from the next village. So I think they, they stole the car and then just went around people's houses. And I don't know. I don't know. Um, so again, just going around all of the corners. Oh, I did say I might run out of bobbin thread and I just have, so bear with a sec while we just do this. I've got another colour the same. I'll do a grey, be alright. <laughs> no, Donna, it was, uh, it, it was, yeah, it's alright. Um, so let's just wind this round here. Oh, Sylvie says her club goes every year to the quilt show, stay over, and it becomes a package deal. That's a good idea. Loads of stalls. I haven't been to a show for a long time. Um, quilt, uh, uh, Festival of Quilts was supposed to be busy last year, wasn't it? Didn't, I didn't go, but I saw loads of comments saying how busy it was. <laughs> well, they've got them, Lisa, and it'll probably go to court, so maybe I'll give them a good idea when I see them. Um, Leslie, they came into the house um, through a back door at the at the bottom. At the, we've got quite a big house. They came in through a back door at one side of the house, went all the way through to the kitchen, took my purse out of my handbag, and went back out again and left no sign of anything. Um, Michelle just showed two folded star Patrick piece to my Wednesday sewing group in their own press. Oh, good for you. Good feeling, isn't it, when people are impressed with you? They didn't get a chance to use the card, so that's good. Um, so again, let's just go around the edge here. And I'm using about a quarter, and you could carry on. You could just keep echo quilting all the way. Whoa, that was a bit wobbly. All the way around the inside. Depends how much quilting you want to do. In fact, something of this size, you don't need to quilt it at all. But I just think it, it, well, it's not a quilt unless it's quilted. Um, it gives it a nice texture. You know, when you look at the size, my bobbin, is it Donna? Sorry. Um, when you look at the, um, the quilted side to the non-quilted side, I just think it's, I like the quilting. I think, I think it needs it. Um, what am I doing there? Oh, that's where I ran out first time. Did I run out there? 
There we go. Missed a bit there. Um, Linda Bobbin um, barked. And I just told her she was a good girl and she went back to sleep again. <laughs> oh, Anne, then, uh, yes, that would have that been dreadful, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, let's keep going around. And then we'll draw them together. See how quick this is to come together as well. Hello, Betty, I'm from Quebec. Welcome along. Okay, there. And back down again. So that's those two done. So let's again snip off these loose threads. Don't like these bits and bobs. Make it nice and neat. See, that's the bit where the turning gap is, and it's lifting up a little bit, if you see from that side. So I will go around and slip stitch that afterwards and just close it. I'll do that properly on the YouTube video when it's got a little bit more time and I can edit things and speed them up a little bit where it needs to be done. Okay, then we're going to join these together. So I'm going to have a practice on a scrap piece of fabric, which I've got down here with probably lots more memorabilia. Now uh, she went inside, she came down here when I was setting up, um, but if she goes in the house, she can't get she can't get back out again unless somebody lets her out. So she's, she's gone in. That's not fabric, that's interfacing. So I should have brought some scrap fabric. Oh, that'll do, okay. So all I want to do is to see the size of the zigzag because I want it short and I want it narrow. Um, so I want it narrower than that. That'll do. I know you can't see that. Let me see if I can show you up here. Oh, I want it as narrow as I can, but so that I can catch both sides of the fabric. So that one I think was, you'd see the stitches on that, I want it really narrow. But if it's too narrow, you're going to miss some of the fabric. So it's nice to have a bit of a practice first. And then we're going to take these two pieces and just make sure they're matching up. I'm getting the right sides together. And I'm going to sew down these two sides. So start at the end. So I'm butting these two together. So don't overlap, just butt them up against each other. And I'm lining this up with the center point of my sewing machine foot. So if you've got a standard or your zigzag foot on your sewing machine, you should have a center mark. And then I'm just really carefully pushing these two pieces together, just like we did with that wadding earlier on. And so all the way down. And I'm using a, a grey thread. Um, if you're using coloured fabric, if you're going to use a coloured thread, it's going to stand out. So if you use something that's grey or beige, even on pattern fabric, it tends to disappear so you don't see them so much. And so let's chop the end of this off, make it tidy. I'm going to go a little bit wider. And then these two pieces together. So I want to line that up as best as I can. I'm not, I'm not too fussed if it's not perfect, to be honest. And keep a nice straight edge. So you can't really pin this, so just line it all up. Actually, oh, I'm, uh, I meant to mention. Do be aware that the way that these triangles have come together this side here is on the bias that will stretch um, which is nice when it comes to this because I can ease this together to make that point meet but do try not to pull on the fabric because that's the stretchy edge of the fabric okay, I'm just pushing those two together so take your time over that and just keep going all the way down just feeding that in between the center slot on my zigzag foot. If you miss a little bit, you can go over it afterwards. So I've got this. 
Now I'm going to carry on and I'm going to iron that actually because it always looks better when it's been ironed. And I'm going to add three more at the side and three more at the top. So I'm going to make a, a nice size quilt. When you're finished, this that, that could be it. But there's no reason, if you wanted to, why you don't put bias binding around it as well. Sometimes the edges where it meets here isn't absolutely perfect. So if you wanted to cut yourself some um, single fold bias binding, obviously that's not right, and slip that over the edge and bind it as well, that'll probably stand out more on that side, then that would finish it off quite nicely. It doesn't need it, it's already finished, but if you wanted to bind it as well, then of course you can bind it as well. That would be entirely up to you. So that is basically that finished. The fabric that I've used here, by the way, is called Little Briar Rose. And it's based on, um, it's actually Maleficent, it's Sleeping Beauty. And it's really dainty. So on these ones, you've got the little, um, the, fa the three fairies. We've got the castle. We've got crowns on this one. There's the fairies again, look. And they're Sleeping Beauty. It's not a licensed fabric, but that's the kind of inspiration behind this one. And the pink spot is a poplin that we have on the website as well. But I, 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 like, I like the print for this size of project as well, because you can actually still see the print. Even on the larger print, which is the one with the Sleeping Beauty character, um, you can still see the character. It's, she doesn't disappear just because we've got a smaller quilt. And remember, you turn this over. I do have bits to tidy up here. And my openings are so closed, but it's double-sided. So if you've got this on a bed and you fold it back, it's going to look the same on both sides. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me just switch my iron off. Um, it, it's nice, isn't it, Olive, if you've, if you've got a group of people, because it doesn't matter at what speed you're sewing, because you can just keep adding to it. So if you're there for an hour and that's all you can make, that's fine, but if you've got a really quick sewer, they can probably make something that's twice as big. But if that's your, going to be a finished size, then you think, well, I want a bigger one than that. There's no reason at this point why you can't just keep adding and adding and adding because you're quilting as you're going. So you're building it up as, as you're actually making it. Uh, I wish I could like other people's comments. Oh, I didn't know you couldn't do that. Um, thanks. Oh, hi, Sarah. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Again, I'll sit here and do a um, placemat using different, that would be a nice idea as well. Five, for that size, five inch squares, no reason why you couldn't do 10 inch squares, you'd have blocks that big. Um, so, that, you know, experiment, try with a little bit of scrap and see what size it turns out at. You can make them smaller, so, you know, instead of five inches, four inches, three inches, wouldn't go too small, but have a, have a play with them. Um, Nancy. I, a, a lot of, do you know, a lot of it is just thinking back to things that I've seen, things that I've read. I've been sewing for an awful long time. I do rack my brains a lot for projects because I'm trying to come up with two a week and sometimes it's quite difficult. Um, or I'll see something maybe on Pinterest and think, well, that looks really difficult. Let me try and figure out an easy way of doing it. And I love doing that. That is so satisfying. So again, I, I didn't invent this. That's not my, my design. I don't know where it came from. Um, but um, it, it's just interpreting it and kind of relaying that to you so that, uh, so that you can make it easily. Uh, thanks, Anne. Glad you liked it. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, everybody. It's been nice to have your company today. Um, right, I'm, again, I'm, I'm still a, a little bit behind because I'm still playing catch up with, with stuff at the moment. Um, Alison, I used um, 8020 wadding on this, uh, which we, I, I think we've still got on the website. So it's 80% wool, 20% polyester, because that makes a nice quilt. This is only going to be for a doll, it's for Maddie. Um, but it, it makes a nice quilt if it's going to go on, on a bed. And this doesn't shrink. It's all pre-washed, so it doesn't shrink. No reason why you couldn't use a fusible fleece. So instead of spraying this to stick it on there, you could just fuse fleece on there, but it will be a little bit stiffer. This is quite soft. And if you wanted it thicker, you know, that's, it makes quite a thin quilt. If you wanted to make it thicker, there's no reason why you couldn't put two squares together, four squares together, it doesn't matter, and build that up and give it a nice little bit of loft as well. Um, oh, that was a long one. Uh, Kirsty, lovely way to make a double-sided quilt, plus it would be great 
to use scraps from other projects, that's a good idea, and be able to type a record of what you've made during the year. That is a lovely idea. Um, thank you. Place mats, uh, perfect for place mats. If you're making place mats, why not use the heat reflective, the, uh, the thermal wadding? Could help there as well. Righty ho, I, I think I'll, what time is it? 20 past five. I'll see if I can do a video. It won't be on tonight because it takes an age to actually edit and render everything. So if I film it tonight, hopefully I'll be able to get it onto YouTube tomorrow. Um, thanks, Angela. What's the best in interfacing to use to make a needle case? Th there's lots of them, Susan. I, I would use a Belizeline H640 or H630, uh, which will give you, it's about the same thickness as this, but it's a little bit stiffer because it's polyester. That's, that's what I would use. Um, Oh, Colette's little girl is due in six weeks. Enough time to make a quilt. Plenty of time. You could do that in a day. Plenty of time. Um, if you're doing a standard quilt, say six by six inch squares, when you back it, would you sew all the way through to the wadding and backing? Yes, you, for this, yes, it's quilted as you go. So each block is quilted individually as you sew. So you will see the quilting on both sides. That is a reversible quilt. So yes, you would do. Um, <laughs> Lisa, I'll, I'll send you some pictures. Maddie book is coming along nicely and hopefully it's going to be out in October. <laughs> um, thank you again for the lovely chat. Oh, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. OK, I need, need to clean up and uh, get ready to do a little bit of filming. I'll see you again on Saturday if you're around at 11 o'clock in the morning. If you can't make it then. Hello, Sylvia in, in Germany. Um, I shall see you next Wednesday at four o'clock. And remember, we do have back in stock the wadding. Apologies again for the, unless it's arrived by now, the um, the block of the month quilt top is not arriving today. That I hope they're, I hope they're going to be here tomorrow, but I will post about that when they're here anyway. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care of yourselves. I shall see you again on Saturday. Bye-bye. Yeah,